By the way, as you are working through the, these uh, homework questions, uh, what I really encourage you to do if you get stuck, if you have difficulties, is use this link here, message your instructor about this question. When you do, the system actually uh, sends me, uh, it includes a lot of information. It tells me what question you had, and actually this information here, it tells me what exact numbers you got. And uh, I, I can actually even look at the attempts you've had. So uh, do use this link to ask me questions about the homework. Um, so let's see, momentum. Um, I think it will be easy enough. Uh, yeah, I think it, this is just a simple application of the formula of momentum. Um, uh, usually people have questions for me on multi-part questions. I guess um, question eight could be good. Let me just look ahead on question 11 to make sure it's not the overly difficult. Oh yeah, this is the scenario I was doing it in the simulation. I, so I think since I was kind of doing this in the simulation, I'll leave this for you to calculate. Um, yeah, and um, I'll leave this for you to calculate. Yeah, and um, yeah, then what I was saying earlier in the video, how in the collision kinetic energy dissipates, um, you, you will see as you're going through this calculation. So let me leave that discovery, journey of discovery for you. And I will um, do question eight in the remaining time or, or so. Um, so, um, so by the time you get to this point, uh, this is what you will have seen from your reading in the textbook. So what you will have seen are the definition of momentum. So we use the letter P for momentum. I don't quite know why, but um, we use the letter P for momentum. <laughs> and that the momentum is defined as mass times velocity. That's one. And we define a quantity called impulse. And there isn't really a good letter for impulse, so let me just spell it out. And this impulse is defined as this, force times duration of time for the time that the force is acting. And this impulse kind of has a similarity to work, which is defined as force times displacement and actually, um, there's that similarity to work here too, because work is uh, uh, work gives you change in energy, and uh, in a very similar way, impulse gives you change in momentum, and it's these overlapping sets of relationships that you are going to use. That you have this expression for momentum, and using that, you can somehow get to change in momentum. And this impulse, it has, um, it has kind of a hand in both worlds. It can be described in terms of change in momentum, or it can be described in terms of force and duration of time. So in part A, it gives you this information. Um, boxer, what, blah, blah, blah. It's given you force. It's given you duration of impact. So you can use the information given, uh, formula given here to calculate the impulse. So force times the duration of contact, uh, 4700 times 0 0.08. That's the impulse, 376 Newton times a second. I hope, let's see. Good, that's the impulse. And in part B, it says, um, in, sometimes we don't know the forces, but instead we know the initial and final velocities. And it says, consider a baseball, a batter hits a fastball moving at some speed, ball flies away at some speed. So it's giving you information that you can use to calculate momentums with or momenta with, and then ask you for magnitude of the impulse. Um, 
All right, so it seems like we can calculate the change in momentum. And here's what you need to be careful with a question like this one. Um, it's that the momentum and the velocity, they are vector quantities, direction matters. So the situation that's described here, what it really looks like is, imagine you have a bat and you have a ball that's coming towards the bat with a speed of 44 meters per second. And after this ball hits the bat, and when it's flying away, it's going the other way. So it uh, really, if you are trying to include the direction of that velocity, then the way we would describe this velocity is as, let's say, minus 41 meters per second. So from this first value, you would say, all right, you have initial momentum of 44 meters per second times this mass here. Uh, let me do that on a calculator. I don't think I can do that on, in my head. Um, so 44 times 0 0.145. So you have initial momentum of 6.38 um, kilogram times meter per second. So 6.38 kilogram times meter per second. And the final momentum you get from this negative velocity here it, it's, it's negative final momentum. So the final momentum is an 41 times 0 0.145, but it's minus 41 times 0 0.145. Or uh, let me just, I'm just gonna put in positive numbers, 41 times 0 0.145, but it's negative value of that momentum. So minus 5.145, 9.45 kilogram meter per second. So um, here we are going to use this, um, use this uh, second relationship for impulse that it relates directly to change of momentum. And the change of momentum isn't 6.38 minus 5.945, but change in momentum or rather the absolute value in change in momentum is 6.38 minus, minus 5.945. So when you work out the signs, it ends up being plus 5.945. So, um, so be mindful of that direction. And when you do that, the answer you get is 6.38 plus 5.945. So 12 point rounded to three significant figures. So 12.3, let's try that and see. And that's the correct answer. All right, um, and um, uh, for uh, part C, you take this uh, uh, impulse and you kind of work backward, assuming some duration of time, you can work out the average of force. And I think that most people can do that. All right, I'm a little bit over time. Uh, so I guess I'll stop here. Um, so I hope you, uh, uh, you enjoy uh, chapters four and five, which is quite a bit more conceptual, more than most people usually enjoy uh, chapters two and three, which were more mathematical.